Welcome to the National Basketball Arena in Tala. I'm Emmett Ryan from Ball in Europe, and this is by far our most ambitious project to date, our enormous, massive Irish Super League season preview for the 24-25 campaign. We've spoken to all 13 of the men's Super League teams, as well as several of the women's Super League teams, but we didn't speak to them all here. We're bringing you on a trip through time. First, we're gonna bring you to Dublin, elsewhere in Dublin, of course. We're gonna bring you to Glasnevin, and we're going to bring you to Rathfarnham. We're going to meet Aina in Rathfarnham, and we're going to meet St. Vincent's in Glasnevin. It's a fantastic country so far. Uh, the people are great, very honest and trustworthy individuals. Um, as a team, you know, there's a lot of returners from this past season. Got a couple transfers in, obviously, um, imports as well. So really looking forward to it. It's been a great past couple weeks. And I was your front mark, and sorry, you coached from Jackie Alas here. Yes, sir. Like, how are you adopting to life in Ireland so far? Uh, living in Europe Pat, this past year, um, it was uh, it was a great experience, and I think that really prepared me for this moment. Obviously, it's a little different because it's, it's a, an English being a country, um, but you know, just the basketball in Czech and my my head coach Andy Hipsher uh, really prepared me to be a head coach one day. And obviously, this was the year it happened. And like for you, obviously, Vincent's had a tough season last year. Like, what are the objectives? What are the goals here this season? Just be as successful as possible. Um, implementing a winning culture every single day, whether that's in practice. On the court in practice, it could be off the court after practice or before practice. Um, just implementing a winning culture, um, whether that's our terminology, it's how we play in a game, um, how we operate in a huddle, everything like that. If we implement winning at that fashion at a high level, we have a really good chance to be really successful. And like for you, like what attracted you to come to this country to coach in the first place? Because obviously it's a huge change in life from both the places you'd associate with you with. Yeah. I've, I've always been a fan of European basketball. I've been watching European basketball. Probably watch more European basketball than I actually watch NBA basketball. Um, so I just think it's a lot more pure over here, just the game itself. Obviously very team-oriented, and uh, I know Ireland's a very safe country, really nice people, and uh, I, was, I was really looking forward to it. Whenever I had that interview, I knew right after the call, it was, this was it. I like speak, because I know also you coached in GBT, uh, and you work with Chris Coffey, who had a great BCL season yes. last season. So, like, you know, you work with a real range of players. So what are you hoping that'll help you with when you're working with this squad? First off, Coffee Bean is a great individual. He's a great dude and a great player. He's an absolute kid. He's a joy to be around. Um, really just hopefully just getting to, to, to work with, you know, other high-level players and more high-level players. Um, Jim Blount, uh, who's also in this league, is, yeah. is represented by my agency. Haven't gotten to meet him in person, but obviously a high-level player. Looking forward to actually shaking his hand and meeting him in person. So all the years of talking beforehand, you were the ones chasing. Now you've got the target on your back. Was that change the dynamic at all? Yeah, well, and then, you know, we were chasing, but I think everyone that came to play us, well, when we went to play them, they, they knew how like, big we are, so, you know, they raised their levels anyway, so I can't imagine it's going to be too much higher, although I do believe the talent in the knee, you get the men in, is a lot stronger than what it was last season, so absolutely, we're going to have to raise their levels again, so. And it's obviously a big change in the format now, the conferences are gone, does that change the plan for the season at all? Uh, yeah, just holding away, but it's still the same situation at the end of the season where it's the top eight into the playoffs to try and win the league. So we're still waiting to find out what the situation is for winning the straight league. And um, apparently that's not going to be the main advice. So, uh, look, you know, we just have to figure out, when we find out what it is, we're probably just way of it. But at the minute, you know, they're there for the game. You know, we try and win every game. And obviously, like, looking at the priests and prep, you've kept pretty much the whole band together. Like, how important for you is that for continuity? Uh, I know that, I suppose, everyone knows that we bring most of our guys back nearly every season if we can, if it's possible. So, yeah, it's huge. The club enjoy that as well as the same faces. We don't have to integrate as many players into the squad and stuff. And so, yeah, it, it helps the preseason. It just helps around the bond of the players and all that sort of stuff. So, it, it is a good sort of bonus for us so we don't change too much every year. Last couple of weeks of preseason, because obviously you're only been together a couple of weeks now. You've only got a couple more weeks yeah. till it all starts off. Like, for you as a coach, what are you focusing on between now and opening night? Yeah, oh, well, you we can probably see it there at time. Fitness, fitness levels are pretty low. It takes us too long to get into our offense. Uh, we're not getting back transition-wise. They're, they're getting into the spots that they want to be in. Um, so, you know, the fitness levels, and obviously then, the continuity will come back soon, but we need to work on that a lot. Um, so around them sides of things. Offensively, you know, I think when we play, uh, when we play the way that we want to play, teams are going to struggle against that. So that's what we want to try and implement and try and make ourselves better than what we were at the end of last season. So our journey takes us to Cork next for the Mangan Classic, where we met five of the Super League teams there to get their thoughts on the season ahead.
How did you feel about the performance in this in this game in particular? Uh, it looked like September basketball. You know, it kind of it, it is what we thought it would be. It was an opportunity to kind of work on our fitness, trying to blood some guys. Some, we're trying to see how guys blend with each other. So, as an exercise, it's, it's what we wanted it to be. Um, you know, the opportunity to try to execute in the red zone. You know, those last four minutes of the fourth quarter, and then even to go into overtime in September. That's like added value. I, I asked earlier if Danny wanted more money for us to play overtime, you know, because it was so it's so important to our development. But I was going to say, overtime preseason basketball is always a little bit weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty weird, but but we'll take it because again, every, every there's always an opportunity to learn. There's always an opportunity to learn, and, and, and September is when you really got to learn. I think it's like your guys are only together very recently with the new players in. So for you as a coach, obviously it's your first season in this particular role. Like, what's the challenge for you now the next couple of weeks being now and when the season starts? Um, I, I, I think one is to continue to try to build capacity in everybody. Some of these guys don't realize, you know, well, what's what's in them. And I'm talking about some guys that have been around four, five, ten years. There's more in them and, and we're, our job is to try to tap that. But they're just really just to play, try to play cohesive basketball, unselfish basketball. We have to improve on the defensive end. Um, we're not going to give up 90 a game. We're not. We're, we're not. That'll be the hill I die on. You know, like, so we have to improve defensively. And um, again, it, it's every game we go through is an opportunity for us to learn more about each other. And like for you, so obviously you got a couple more weeks coming ahead. So tell us about what the planning is for you over the next week or two as you get closer to the 5th of October. Well, look, it's, it's just tighten up a lot of the principles we do. We don't want to become cookie cutter. We, we, we run a lot of what's called read offenses. So that, that's habit building and guys understanding proper spacing. When we space well, our, our talent comes out. When we space poorly, it reduces talent. So right now it's, it's really just betting in and, 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 and habit building within the team. And you had a different experience last season, obviously, you're in the Women's League. I think first time in the Super League in the Women, wasn't it, for you? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It? Yeah, it was. So having had that year, giving back to the men, does that, like, you know, different in experience help you as a coach, like? No, I, I, uh, no. No? No, it, it, no like, I, does a change of flavor help give you a new outlook? I don't know. I mean, like, I, I, I know the men's Super League fairly well at exactly, this stage, yeah. you know what I mean? But um, I, I think coaching is coaching, teaching is teaching. Uh, you, once you got a, a, a group that want to improve, and, and, and they come in and, and, and uh, are committed towards a process, then it doesn't matter who it is, honestly. I, I, I just love coaching. And so obviously it's a 13 uh, team league this season, so it's going to be like 22 full games over the campaign before we get to the postseason. Like a lot of people are saying it's going to be a bit longer, say 24 games, I can't count. Uh, 24 games, a lot of people are saying that's a bit longer. Is that, do you like having more games in this season? How are you feeling about it? Um, I, I, I haven't given much thought about the length of it. I, I think it was noticeable to all the coaches in the league, the number of doubleheaders. And, and I think that second game on a weekend will probably determine the league winner as well. You know, when, when you start at the end of the season, somebody's going to look back and say, how did you do in those double headers? Like for you, like how important are those two and no weekends? Well, they're, they're important. And it's, it's why, as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to build capacity because you're not going to do it with five guys. You know, so we, we're, we're trying to build depth in our team and, 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 and play to everybody's skill level and play to everybody's talent, extract that so that the aggregate does it. I mean, you can only, you can only play one game at a time but I am conscious that, you know, depth is going to help this league. Whoever has depth is going to be there or thereabouts, you know. And the last thing I want to ask you about, obviously, because of that format, we don't have the conferences anymore. Are you going to miss that yourself, like, you know, as a coach? No, no, look, it's, it's, it's really just about what's in front of you. You know what I mean? I, I've gone over the years with both straight league. You know, I think my first league here was in 98. There was 14 teams in the Super League straight league. Yeah. You know, and, and then we, I was here when they developed the conferences. There's, there's pluses and minuses for both. So it's kind of like take take what is in front of you. Okay, the only gonna, game that matters is the next one. I'm going to be Colombo with just one more thing. I know I said that was the last question, but you have some new arrivals. Tell us about what you think of them, what you've seen early on with the new guys. Well, my my, my first thing is, is is they're terrific people, and and that, that's really important because I, I I I place a real high premium on 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 uh, team culture and camaraderie and, and and togetherness, and these guys were heavily vetted for that. And they're, they're high character, they got a bit of toughness to them. Um, but on the basketball end, they're pretty versatile. You know, Armand could play a couple of different positions, one, through, one two, three. Uh, Jamal could play two, three, four. Um, Yaxi could play four, five, three. So that helps because that allows us to, to uh, address depth and, and to put some lineups in for different situations. So I like that about them. How did you feel with the performance this afternoon? Yeah, I suppose um, this is probably our first walkout of the season, so um, 
there's a lot of sloppiness. Uh, we haven't done many set plays and stuff, so we kind of played a lot off the cuff. Um, so yeah, I'm happy enough with what we've done defensively. Our principles kind of worked on a small bit this week. Can be better, obviously, we'll touch up on that and, and go from there after the tournament this weekend. And obviously, Declan, it's a new local organ this year. What's it been like bringing all these players together? Yeah, like I suppose, look, it's like, you know, um, it's going to be a gelling process. It could take us six, seven weeks before we actually get into the rhythm of things, get new players, knowing what they're about, the styles of play, you know, do what we want to do as a system then as well, on top of everything else, you know, with all these different talented guys. But I'm confident enough after, hopefully after the pre-season, when we hit the first game, that we'll be so far down the line that we might be able to get the results we needed at the start of the season. And obviously, in terms of like, what's, what's the goal this season? Like, what are you aiming for? Are you looking for top eight or are you just looking to stay up? Or what's the real big goal this year? Yeah, I suppose for us, um, it's, it's, it's a playoff spot. We want to go, I suppose, Jordan, come to Kilargan, play with us. Got out this during the summer, wanted to go down and play with Kilargan, which is a, a massive thing for us. It's such a small town to see a player like that as an Irish caliber coming down to play with us. I think it's a huge thing for us. So, yeah, we want to kick on, you know. Um, we hope we have uh, brought in the right guys, the right style of player for the, one, the system we want to play. And yeah, I'm hoping for a playoff spot. That's, what we, that's the ideal uh, thing we want, really. And you mentioned a small town. Like, I love the community effort you all put in down there, like, because with the gym, obviously, it's assembled with the bleachers for before every game. Yeah. Like, it's a real big whole, the whole town comes together for it, really, don't they? Yeah, it's like it's like a family oriented thing, really. You know, it's such a small town, but there's a massive packing. Like, you, you pack 400 people into the hall, it feels like there's 800 people, you can double it, you know? So the atmosphere is brilliant down there in game nights like that. When the games are close and tight, and I hope we'll be in every game this year that it'll keep bringing the crowds and we can entertain. That's what the purpose will be. And between now and the season starting, like what's a big thing for you to focus on the coach to get these guys ready? Yeah, I think it's defensive principles will be the big thing for me first off in the first few weeks. Everybody know their roles. Um, and then offensively, uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll start going from there, knowing what we want, uh, knowing where the boys want the ball, and, and, and know the system we want to play. And the last thing I want to ask, because everyone's talking about it this season, it's going to be a longer season, 24 games, everybody plays everybody twice. Are you looking forward to having that sort of that drawn out process? Yeah, I, look, I actually like the idea of the All in One League again. Um, I think it gives a fair reflection with everybody across the league if you play home and away against everybody. I think it shows that the top eight teams will be the top best eight teams to get into the playoff spot and there you go, you fight from there then to get that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You have a game every weekend, you have two games some weekends. Um, it's going to be busy, you're going to need a good squad. Uh, you're going to need to keep everybody fit. It'll be a test, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And that's something Pat Price said, the back-to-backs -back are going to be such important weekends. Yeah, it's going to be huge, yeah. Um, I suppose when we were looking at the fixtures trying to lay it out, we were kind of thinking, Maybe a Friday, a Sunday, or a Saturday, Monday, you know, if we could do it in bank holidays. So we've tried to do as best as we could that we're not really a Saturday and a Sunday because at the level these guys play you now, you know, the athletic ability and everything, the shift they put in, it's a really hard ass to go two days in a row with their bodies. So yeah, look, it's, it's going to be a squad game. We're going to want, definitely want to go 10, 11 deep uh, weekends like that. So yeah, look, it'll be exciting. All the teams seem like they've stacked up. Um, it looks to be one of the strongest leagues I've ever seen import wise coming in again. So yeah, it, it looks like an exciting season ahead. Obviously, you got the win in the first back to back. What's it like though getting all these getting the lads out for this much action when we get? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable. Like we're fellas are sick of training at this stage. You're back four or five weeks and you just want to see what you have. You want to see who you have. You want to see, you know, what, what everybody else has and it's great to have it all in one building. It's good. I know we got the win, but you know, pre-season records don't count, we all know that. And like for you, because obviously the lads are only back a couple of weeks, what have you been working on to try and get them back ready to be where you want them to be? Uh, I just think a lot of fitness stuff, a lot of running stuff, playing a lot. I believe in playing a lot in, 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 in training and, and, and getting up and getting to do stuff and loads and loads of games. We're just really working on spacing now. I don't think anyone has any mates or offenses in that they're going to run. It's small, always a bit of shadow boxing when it comes to these things. You know, we're about three weeks out, so, you know, just getting the boys up, getting them fit and uh, and building back up again. And in terms of the new lads that have come in, how have you been working them into it? Yeah, look, the guys are great people, first of all. Mark and Brendan, we eight honours to come in next week, but Mark and Brendan, they're great people. They've integrated very well with the team. They're loud. They, they get things going. You know, you're, they're your typical American basketball players, which is what you want. They're not afraid to say with the stick. So they're good. And, and our guys respect good basketball players. And that's all they want, really.
And now you're going to have a lot of back-to-backs this year. And I'm thinking with your arena in particular, that's surely going to be an advantage because your people get pretty loud. Yeah, they do, they do. But they'll, they'll earn their money this year in the back-to-backs. But look, it's an exciting season. I love a true league. Uh, and I'm glad we went to a true league, but with a big playoff structure rather than the premiership style. It's basketball is too unforgiving to go go that. You're talking about amateur players who might miss a week, a fella gets injured who might miss two weeks. That can cost you the league. So I'm really excited to see what the playoffs are at the end of top eight. And I hear that there's, you know, looking at three game playoffs the following year uh, for the first round. So it's building, it's exciting. More games, the better. Two games a week is all good for us. And like the last thing I want to ask you about is between now and opening night, what's the most important thing you're going to be working on, John? Togetherness. Getting everybody together as a group and all on the same page, 100%. You know, every coach in this league are high, high level. They can draw up X's and O's. I think at the end of the day, if you have a team that's together and committed to it, you'll, be, you'll do well with all the other stuff. Now, those of you tuning in, might be your first time on this channel. A huge, huge help to us is if you could hit that subscribe button, tell your friends, share. We're going to do as lo much content as we can really this season from the Irish leagues and all the support we get, all the views, it helps us build it up and allows us to do more content like this. What non-coach or player is speaking to at this, but definitely someone I want to speak to for this video. I'm not going to say how many years you've been covering this sport, but it's a lot longer than me. What's it like for you to get out here and see some preseason games? Uh, it's, it's different, and, and if it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have come here because I completely forgot about the tournament. Um, yeah, you're right, I've, I've been involved with Cholester for 43 years. I've been involved uh, writing for The Sun and then The Star for 40 in total. So yeah, I've been around for a while and it's nice to come to somewhere, I'm living down here now, so it's nice to come to somewhere like here, pre-season, no pressure, you just have a look at the games, have a look at the new players, and there's an awful lot of new players this year. And obviously you've got the streaming now, has that made life easier for you to follow Cholester? Um, no, not really, not really. Okay. But um, we won't go into that. Uh -huh. um, I, I, I just say no. I don't. I don't. I don't watch streams at all. But um, obviously, you still have a lot of friends in the sport. Like for, so for you being able to catch up with them at events like this, it must be very good. Oh, it's very easy. Yeah, it's, and it's very good. It's very good. I mean, I only walked in the door there, and I met a guy from Bohemians. <laughs> you know, as you know. Yeah, I, 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 fan. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. And well, for those who are watching, I'm a UCD one. fan. We'll and the one. night before this is recorded, uh, Bo's not UCD in the cup in a bit of a one-sided game. Yeah. Uh, but that's the thing. I mean, people from all, all over this board is one of the best things about it. Yeah, I know this is amazing. Uh, do they play again next week? Uh, there's more games next week. Not yeah. here, but there's, no, the, the league doesn't start till the fifth. Yeah. But there's more preseason next week in for league. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, but like, but for you, like, the last one I want to ask you is like. I know obviously you're limited to the games you can go to, but like for people who can go to games, like, you know, why would you encourage someone to come to a game in this league? Well, I, I actually think that, you know, the last few years, um, crowds have come back. Um, you, you talk about Cholester. Cholester just do not have enough space to bring the people in. That's it. I mean, it, they really now have to go and get a bigger gym because it's just, it's not a, it's not feasible. It's a good it problem to have though. Oh, it, it's a great problem to have. And like they even now have got to a situation where like Division One games and schools games and all, they're, they're all getting big crowds because it's draining down from the men's and women's teams. Yeah, look, we've played two games so far this weekend. Uh, I think, look, at times we've got good in patches, not so good in other patches, you know. Um, I think this stage of the season, it's about guys just kind of getting used to each other. Um, overall, I didn't think we played great there in the second one there against Tralee. Uh, it was probably a bit downward in terms of what we did last night, but luckily we've got another couple of training sessions and a couple of more pre-season games to improve on that. I know, you rallied a lot in the second half of last season, obviously winning the cup, semi-finals of the league. Like, how do you carry that momentum coming into this campaign? Yeah, look, obviously bringing Elijah Tillman back, you know, he was part of that team last year. We have a lot of returning guys. Now we do obviously have two or three new pieces that we've added in, but that's going to be the same goal again, you know. Last thing, last year I think the team was, we were losing a lot of games, people were riding us off. We were the underdog going into a lot of the games, and that kind of gave the guys that bit of excitement to, you know, go on and perform that way. And so when it comes to like those new pieces you have, like what's it going to take for you as a coach to make sure it all gels together? Uh, I think, to be honest, I spoke to the dress the guys just need to have each other's back, you know. We need to play with that team unity. Um, if, if one guy knocks down a shot, 
we, we celebrate with him. If one guy gets knocked down, we're over to help him up. Um, there was a bit of individuality there crept in at times where we didn't share the basketball as much as I'd like. Um, so we just kind of got to cut that out and start playing as a team. That's the thing, you've got about three weeks roughly now at the time of recording this until the opening night of the season. What are the key things for you to focus on, Danny, as you're getting it? Uh, I think it's just building that team chemistry, you know. Guys getting used to their roles, guys getting used to what the other guys can do. Um, like Sean and Elijah arrived this week. We had two training sessions, so last night was a lot of the guys first time even playing with Sean. So I suppose they're now getting used to him, how he plays. Again, no today. So that's it's just building that chemistry, really. And like, oh, it's got to this weekend that we're down here for, because you went deliberately with not a tournament format, so as many teams as possible could take part. Do you feel it's been a success? Yeah, no, I do. Like, look, being honest, a couple of years ago when we entered the league, we went to a so-called pre-season tournament. It was a uh, like seven minutes a quarter to cramp in the games to get semi-finals and finals. I didn't enjoy it myself. I'm speaking with the other coaches, they felt the same. They were like, it's not a true reflection on pre-season because you're playing less time and different things like that. So what we said last year was rather than have a tournament format, uh, Brian Mangan, our main sponsor, came on board and we said we'd have it the, the annual Mangan Classic um, where teams could play in obviously the Merrick Arena, try and get as many fans here as possible for basketball people, 10 minute quarters, you know, four quarters a game, just like a regular Real game. basketball. Three PO here now, so the referees are getting used to the players, players are getting used to the referees, and that's it, a proper pre-season. And I've like, got to ask you now about sort of the season ahead, because obviously you've got big hopes, high hopes, I'd assume. Like, you know, what do you feel, you know, is on the table for Demons? Look, I suppose, like, look, last year, teams wouldn't have said much about us, so we uh, went on and won the cup, you know. I think this year, with the straight league format, we just need to be consistent week in, week out, you know. So that's the thing, I think every week as it comes, be consistent and ensure that we keep getting the wins. So when it comes to the position at the end of the year, we're, we're there, thereabouts there with, with a trophy. And so I suppose for you, this stage of the season, like how long have you had to get lads together or what, what are you still working on? Well, we probably started in early August, uh, but again, it was probably mainly young guys and then a couple of the senior guys working their way back to injury. Um, so then we've just been kind of scrimmaging, to be honest, and very little kind of structure. Uh, just getting up and down, get a bit of conditioning then. Uh, kind of really started when Isaiah came in, when around the 1st of September. Uh, Bap was in then around that time as well. Uh, and then obviously Kaysen came in just on Thursday, so I'm very happy. Uh, and obviously one of the things you have going for you is that like, you know, Kaysen's a regular, he's been here year in, year out, so you don't have as much roster turnover as other places have. Is that going to stand to you guys a bit? Uh, yeah, we definitely think so. Um, I mean, it was, like, Kaysen obviously is a, that caliber of player you, you don't find everywhere. Um, and we were delighted to have him, so we were, he was the least worried we were about because we knew at any point in time we could plug him in. Um, whereas Isaiah just needed to get used to the league. It was great uh, to get the game under his belt today, same thing with Baptiste. So, so yeah, but like with Kaysen, very easy to integrate. And I suppose for you at this stage of the season, we still have a couple of weeks till the league starts. What are you working on yourself the next two, three weeks to make sure these guys are ready to go when the games actually matter? Uh, defense. It'll be all defense. It's been conditioned a bit of offense right now, but uh, next three weeks will be defense. Do you reckon there's uh, any coach who's not saying defense in this league? Uh, no, no, I don't think so now, right now. But again, it's, uh, it's one of those ones where the guys are happy to get out and play and play offense right now, so it is good. Um, but yeah, like that. I think it's it's what win championships. We show, it showed last year with Aina. Uh, they were probably the, most, the best defensive and offensive team. So uh, we're going to try to get there this year. And obviously came extremely, extremely close last year. Like, does coming that close give you the extra motivation for the season now? Uh, we actually haven't talked about it that much. Uh, maybe part of it is just that we haven't had the group together. Uh, so there's, there's not a real reason to talk about it just yet. Um, definitely not a revenge mission, I don't think, because uh, we don't feel slighted. Uh, the better team won last year. Uh, we, we want to get there, so we're happy with kind of trying to progress every week. Um, so yeah, I, I, it did hurt. It, did, it still hurts when you think about it sometimes. Uh, but at the same time, uh, some of this group is new and it's great to have kind of fresh faces there who are bringing just enthusiasm rather than uh, that kind of revenge feeling that we might think we need. And obviously the one thing I've been hearing from all the coaches about is the double headers. Everybody's talking about them as a thing. Is that going to be a huge factor this season, like having those weekends where there's two games on and you're trying to make sure you go at least 1-1, but ideally 2-0? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. We, uh, we had a one experience of it last year. With, uh, we played Saturday night and then played Sunday in Clorgan. And we weren't right for the following week. We played Marie the following weekend. Um, not making excuses, but we just we didn't train well that week. Um, so again, like that, we're probably looking at dropping our Monday session maybe going Tuesday, Thursday only, uh, probably more gym time, more, more recovery time. 
Um, so yeah, I think it is. I think everyone is the same. They just don't. It's the unknown, the fear of the unknown, a little bit. Um, so again, we'll just see how the first couple of weeks go and um, how we react. And I was talking to your old friend Declan King earlier, so I've got to make sure I bring up something from him. It's like the one because of the IWA, you get a great crowd in there. But the problem is, you get a great crowd in there. Like you know, is, do you feel at times you wish it was a, it could handle another 150 more bodies, so it could be an even better crowd? Yeah, uh, we probably feel we'd like the court a little bit wider, uh, especially now. Uh, it just would kind of playing a little bit smaller. Uh, the crowd though is great. Like I mean, oh, it's all the kids. Like, you know, my kids are there. They love it on a Saturday night. Um, so yeah, we'd yeah, probably like another hundred if you could. Um, you, you do feel it when you go to places like Tralee and, and places like Mardike here. There's that, there are good crowds that do swing it in uh, momentum. Um, but again, our crowd was loud enough then. And we, I, that Demons game in the semi-final, the place was rocking. So uh, we were really, really happy after that. And the last thing, because I've asked you what you're going to work on with the guys. What are you going to work on yourself to make sure you're in the right position for opening night? Uh, I probably listen to Brian a little bit more now. I probably haven't listened to him enough right now. Uh, so I definitely have to listen to him a bit more. And again, we probably haven't started our video work around like that yet, which is uh, part of it's just kids going back to school and all. <laughs> but, uh, real again, life, you mean? Real life, exactly then. So I think now we're a little bit more, we're all a little bit more settled guys are in, permits are got. So uh, we can actually kind of sit down and kind of get our own, our own routine as coaches. So uh, yeah, kind of that's what hopefully the next couple of weeks. So we're finally back here in Tala. As you can see, lots of the players around me. But before we continue with the men, we're going to meet several of the women's Super League teams to get their thoughts on their upcoming season. Obviously, coming into this season, you've had preseason. It's nearly done. It's nearly yeah. the start. <laughs> how, are, how are you looking forward to the coming season? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the new season. We've got like a, new, a good few new players in, um, and we've come together nicely as a team. So. Just looking forward to see how everything kind of pans out this year um, and excited to get going. And obviously, like, there's always a lot of change in the bodies coming in, coming out. So, like, you know, tell us about your new teammates, what they're like and what they'll add to your team. Um, so we've got a few younger players coming up through the club. Um, and then we also have um, a few players coming from, we've got Alex Mulligan from UJ and then another girl from Brunel, Katie Walsh. And then we've got our two Americans. So we've got like a really strong core kind of building and then obviously the players that were there before and um, so we've kind of got players that have a lot of um, experience coming in so I hope it'll work out well. <laughs> now, so your coach Hilary Nets, he kind of cried off doing an interview because he's not wearing club gear. What's it like having him as the head coach? It's good yeah it's um, definitely a um, kind of new fresh set of eyes and um, he hasn't been involved in the women's league before but last year it was um, interesting to see his take on um, kind of the sport and um, he implemented a lot of kind of like 1v1 game, which is what he's good at with all his like um, athletic training stuff and whatnot. And now tell us the big hopes for this season. Like what are your goals, Ooh, what are your dreams? I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> uh, big hopes for this season would obviously be to um, make it to the cup final. That would be massive. Um, I think we could definitely reach final four as well. Like we, we've got a good team there. It's just getting it all to like work right on the court is, will be the challenge this year. So hopefully it'll all work out. <laughs> and you guys, uh, obviously, in terms of wanting to get that, you got to do certain things right on the court. So tell us yeah. what meteors need to get right on the court to achieve your dreams. Ooh, that's it. Um, I think we just need to be very clinical and composed. I think because we are a younger team, um, like it's easy to kind of get caught up in the game um, and then finding kind of that stability in our leadership and our players and just being clinical and making sure that like we do things the way we practice them. Um, yeah, so I don't know, being clinical and composed will be like what we need to bring with us into the season if we want to achieve our dreams. <laughs> Thurka, obviously you came so close last year. How are you feeling coming into this season? Uh, we're really excited. Um, obviously it was really disappointing last year to really have a good year, but finish with no trophies. Um, so that's the goal this year is uh, to get back to winning ways and get off to a quick start. Uh, obviously Keir Bracken's come back from RACL, so it's Great to have her back playing our preseason games and hopefully she'll get off to a good start the season. Got two new pros in, so they're settling into the team well. So we're really excited to get going again. And obviously you've got some new players in and you've got Kira back. Tell us about how you've been gelling in preseason. Yeah, it's been going really well. Uh, we've been working hard. Uh, we've played a couple of friendlies over the last two weeks. Uh, done quite a bit of running and got ourselves back to match fitness. So uh, we've got about five sessions left, I think now. So for the first game, which isn't a lot, but uh, we're looking forward to kind of really kind of dialing offenses up and getting our rotations down on defense for the first game. And obviously you've retained the core of your roster, like for chemistry coming into this season, how important is that? I think it's really important. It's probably something that we as a club do very well over the last number of years. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis in Lips Celtics around kind of keeping our kind of club ethos and getting the local players going and stuff like that. And we, we've done that really well over the last number of years. So 
that's kind of allowed us to keep the same core and uh, I guess just building on that and building on those relationships with some of the newer players coming in is really important as well. And when we're talking about building, in terms of on the core performance, to get your goals this season of getting trophies, what do Celtics need to do and what do you feel you most need to work on as a team? I think it all starts with defence. Um, you know, like last year we were pretty good defensively. I think we can be a little bit better. We probably blew teams out a little bit offensively sometimes more than kind of holding stuff down defensively. So it's just about improving our defensive kind of rotations and intensity so that even if we have an off night offensively uh, with all the firepower we have, that uh, we can stay within games and, and kind of grind out some wins. And I can't let you go, given you're in the national team, and I'd ask you about that. You've got games coming up, obviously, uh, two windows coming ahead. Well, one window, sorry, ahead. Like, how are you feeling going into those this season? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we had a good summer with the international team, so it's about just kind of building on that. There's lots of new players coming in and uh, kind of getting them experience and getting them up to speed as well is really important. Well, you said we had a good summer. I've got to ask, what was it like playing Uganda in Germany? Uh, it was a little bit of a, an unusual experience. I kept saying when we went to Uganda, but obviously we weren't in Uganda, we were in Germany, but uh, it was really good. Uh, it was great to play different opposition, a different type of team than we played probably in the last while, a really, really athletic opposition. Um, but yeah, no, it was a really good experience. Uh, nice to play different teams. I've now played a team from both South Africa and Africa, so that's pretty cool uh, to have. But uh, yeah, no, it was good. It's great. Megan, is this your first season in Ireland? Yes, this is my first season here. So how are you finding the experience down in Kerry? Uh, so far, it's been beautiful. The town is so cute and it's been really good so far. And like Megan, so tell us about your play in, back in the U.S., I'm guessing. Like, uh, where did yeah. you play college? And, uh, um, tell us I about played that. college at the University of Nevada. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then I did a season in Melbourne, Australia. And then now I'm here. Uh, so, Nevada, are you from there originally? No, I'm from, uh, grew up in California. Oh, wow. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, Nevada, obviously known for Reno, known for Vegas, moreover. No, like Reno obviously, first, yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a good buddy in yeah. Reno, uh, so I'm always biased to that. But also, obviously, you're from California. Very different climates to Ireland. So how have you found the weather yeah. in Kerry so far? Um, so far, it hasn't been horrible. We've got some sun, so I appreciate that. I, I love the sun, but the rain will be tough for me, but it'll be good. Yeah, we tend to trick you guys in preseason, I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, so now I'm going to ask our actual basketball stuff. So for you, it's your first season playing here in Ireland after a year in Australia. Tell us about like your hopes, your dreams, and you know what you want to get out of this experience. Obviously, we just moved up to the Super League. Um, I think that we can do really well. I'd like to finish top three. I'd like to win the league um, um, on a first year out. I think that'd be great. So. And like the way you play center, tell us what, what style of center you are. Um, I'm more of a face-up post player than a back to the basket. So I like a turnaround, a face-up, that kind of stuff. Like to rebound, get out and run. And in terms of the team, you've obviously been over here a couple of weeks now, I'm guessing. Like, how have you yep. found gelling with them, getting to know the other players? Oh my gosh, they're so lovely. The Irish girls are the best. The three, the two other girls I came in with are super nice. We've all been gelling. We've been playing great. Good trainings. It's been going really well. And for, for you, the lifestyle here, because obviously most of the players aren't pros, so I'm guessing there's a lot of downtime during the week. Like, are you coaching? What are you yeah. doing? Um, we do some coaching with the younger girls um, from our area, and then Mostly just exploring Ireland and getting the most out of this experience. And i got to ask you about what you all are going to be like in terms of your identity on the floor. What can we expect to see from you on the floor as a team this year? Um, I think just expect high pace, high energy, good defense, and um, just getting out and running. So. And finally, in terms of execution, what for you to achieve the dreams, the goals of this season, what do you all need to get right? Um, we just need to execute what we're told to do by our coach and then get stops and scores and keep things simple and we'll be good to go. It's your sixth season now in Ireland, so what makes it keep coming back? <laughs> I just enjoy it. I can't give up basketball. Um, it's just just enjoy playing uh, here in Ireland. Um, the community, the competitiveness, uh, just the drive to keep going and get better. So just keep coming back and playing. And so for those who don't know, tell us where home originally is and where you played before here. Uh, so home is Connecticut. Uh, it's on the East Coast, uh, northern part of America. Um, and I played at St. Peter's University, a small school in New Jersey. Pretty competitive conference. We played in the MAC conference. So actually played against a few of the girls in that conference that now play in Ireland. And, and so obviously you're six years in Ireland now. So you've seen a lot of the league. Like, what do you make of the standards? Yeah, the standard, it seems to just be getting better and better every year. Um, uh, higher level players keep coming in and uh, just keeps getting more competitive. So it's really enjoyable and fun. And like for you playing with Port Leash, like what's this experience like? Yeah, I love playing with Port Leash. This is my third season with Port Leash. They're just a great club. They're super welcoming. Um, they really just treat you as if you're family. The fans are great. Um, the whole club is great. And the, I have great teammates. So. And what are the hopes, the dreams for this season? 
uh, the hopes and dreams for this season are to just be the best that we can be. We think that we'll really have a good year and uh, that will really surprise some people. So we're looking forward to it. And in terms of, sort of your identity on the court, like what style do you think you, got, you girls play? Like, you know? Uh, we're hoping to have a fast-paced style this year, so hopefully we can catch some teams off guard with that. And in terms of sort of you know what you'll need to execute to get what you want in terms of on the floor this season, how will you as a team need to execute? Uh, I think we just need to be patient and really utilize um, all the different skill sets that we have. We brought in a few new players, so I think we just need to set everyone up in the, in the best position to be successful individually and as a team. Uh, this season, Mystics, what are the hopes, what are the dreams? Um, I think we're hoping to play off our strengths a lot and to get a lot more wins than we did last year. Um, we need to try to exploit teams on their weaknesses and just really focus on what we can do and push the ball and play hard defence and just try to get out ahead of teams early. Now, my, my, my cunning journalistic years of 20 years, you're playing in Goy, but clearly that accent is somewhere else. So what yeah. attracted you to play at, at Mystics? Um, well, obviously, I wanted to play at a higher level and I thought Super League would be a great opportunity at home I was only playing in the National League so yeah I think I was just ready for the step up and uh, the college have some great courses available as well so kind of just brought me to Galway. And in terms of the identity the style of basketball what can we expect from Mystics this season? Uh, I think we're a very young team so try to get out, uh, run, um, really play hard defence, kind of just terrorise teams and you know really um, just make us hard people to play against so yeah. And in terms of sort of so what you need to do on the court to succeed, like where do you see your game developing this season? Um, I'll probably try to take a lot more outside shots. Um, you know, teams tend to defend the boards well and just makes it hard to get in around them. So yeah, take a lot more shots. And I think we have a very good team in terms of shooting. So we'll really try to get more shots up this year. And uh, now the one thing everyone seems to tell me this year is they want to get better at defense. Is there any difference with that with Mystics? Uh, yeah, to be honest, defence is something that we really need to work on this year. Um, look, we had a lot of points scored on us last year, so we'll really look to bring that down. Do you reckon there's ever been a player or coach who didn't feel they needed to get better at defence? I think there's always room for improvement, yeah, so there's always, yeah, definitely. I like honesty, I like honesty, thanks very much. <laughs> sure. You want to look like me, don't you? Okay, maybe not, but maybe you want to dress like me. Get the BIE merch. Well, you can do so in the shop, which is below this video right now. Obviously. Everything we get, make from the shop goes back into producing more content like this. So if you like any of it, please, you know, give it a look. Get it. Why not? The apron. That's my favorite. And now back to the Women's Super League. Trinity, welcome to the Super League. It's your first season. What are you looking forward to? Um, I'm looking forward to, like, working with my new teammates. And, like, we've practiced a bit. And it's been, like, really great working with them. I'm just excited to, like, play the games and, like, see how basketball is here in Ireland. And tell us about your previous experience playing. Where did you play before you came here? Um, I played at a university, Malloy University, in Long Island, New York. And like, what was it, sort of the, the experience like playing there, and what are you hoping to bring from that to Ireland? Um, just like fast-paced basketball, and like I just want to bring it here and like just keep building and getting better. And like you've been here a couple of weeks now. How are you adapting to life in Ireland? Um, pretty good. It's been a few weeks, so I'm like still getting around and like checking out the city, going down to court, and it's pretty nice. I love it here so far. And in terms of the basketball, you've gotten to know your teammates over the last couple of weeks. Tell us about how you feel your team is looking and what your hopes are for this season. Uh, we've only had a few practices so far, but like I feel like we're more like fast paced, like want to like push the ball. And it's been good so far, so I'm, I'm excited for the season. And it's your first year as a, as a pro, right? So, yeah. like, you know, how are you feeling you can grow and develop as a player to hopefully go on to even better things? Um, just, like, practicing, getting better, like, working on my skills and, like, working outside of practicing just to keep, like, developing and getting better every day. And we've, like, about 10 days when we're talking now until the season starts. How excited are you to I'm get out there and play basketball for real? I'm really excited. I can't, I can't wait to check out and, like, see how it is playing basketball here compared to, like, in the States. So, for myself? <laughs> Uh, Sam, it's your first season in Ireland. Like, tell us about like you know what you're doing in basketball before and how you landed here. Yeah, so I spent five years at the University of Nebraska, which I enjoyed every single moment of it. And then I was playing in Mackay, Australia, for this past summer for about four or five months, and then now I landed here in Dublin. And so uh, you've landed in Dublin a few weeks, I'm guessing now. Like, how are you adjusting to life here? Yeah, so I've been here 
I think almost two weeks now. Okay. Um, sleep was off for a little bit, but everything, I'm kind of settling in now. Practice is good and everything, so it's it's been great. And like Colester, they're the defending champions. <laughs> Everybody wants what you've got. Yeah. Like, do you feel that pressure even as a new player this season? Yeah, I'm still kind of figuring out the dynamic of everything. Um, but yeah, obviously defending champs, so that's super exciting for me. Hopefully I can help them uh, repeat that this year. And obviously you've gotten to know your teammates reasonably well, I hope, over the last two weeks. How do you, how you found getting to know them? Yeah, it's been great. They've been super welcoming, coaches and everything as well. Um, I'm excited to have a really great season, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And in terms of adapting style, because obviously you were in college for five years, just, you know, long stint. Then you had Australia, I guess it was the NBL South, was it? Uh, uh, NBL 1, yeah. NBL 1, yes. Uh, and so, you know, two very different styles again to Ireland. Like, you know, how are you adapting to the style here? Yeah, I think everything's different. Obviously, from college to professional level, style of play is different and then playing overseas. Um, but I think pace of play is definitely be a, be an adjustment. Um, but no, I'm excited. I'm willing to adapt. I think it's going to be fun. And like, people haven't seen you play before. What can they expect to see from you on the court? Uh, I'm definitely more of a slasher than a, a perimeter threat. But definitely working on expanding my game, scoring at all three levels. But like to play fast, like to be physical, get up and down the court. And in terms of what we can expect style of Colester this season, what should we expect to see on the floor? Yeah, I think we're going to look to play with pace, uh, get a lot of shots up, be really aggressive on defense. Uh, we probably won't have a lot of size advantage this season, so we're going to have to be physical um, on the perimeter and look to get after it. And like when you have to play small ball, like what, what are the advantages to being able to do that? Uh, we can run. Most people probably can't keep up with us, so we're going to look to get up and down the court. Orla, coming into this season for Wildcats, like what are the hopes, what are the dreams? Uh, I suppose overall we're hoping to do a little bit better than we did last year. We had a great season last year coming into the semi-finals of the Cups and the final of the Super League. Um, so this year really kind of making our way to the final and possibly winning it. And in terms of the team, like are there many new players in this season? What can we expect to see that's different from Wildcats? Uh, so we have two new Americans after coming in and one new girl from Spain. So we're really excited to do a few games, getting to know each other, how we play, and then dominating hopefully the league. Now it's been a while since I've been down to Wildcats, but I know you get a great, great, you know, loud crowd for your home games. Like, how important is having that great home support you have? Oh, incredible! I mean, I think playing with a crowd, you play just completely different. I mean, the atmosphere it gets to even people on the bench and on the court a little bit of buzz, gets you excited to play and to win. In terms of style on the floor, what can we expect from Wildcats this season? Uh, I think you can expect a bit of everything. We have some really strong shooters, um, strong drivers to the basket. We have Sarah Hickey who dominates the post in it. Game in and game out, so you can see a bit of everything. I mean, you've got someone like Sarah, she's a bucket machine. How oh, helpful is that for the rest of you on the floor? So it's really, it's comforting to know that even if it all goes wrong, just throw the ball into Sarah and she'll find a way to get a, get a body out and a way to get the ball into the basket. And so now, aside from throwing the ball to Sarah, what do you all need to do to execute and achieve your goals for the season? We really pride ourselves on talking and being loud on the court, you know, with a big crowd around you and get a bit distracting but knowing kind of where people are the whole time, it kind of puts you at ease playing so that everything goes right. Well, Kira, it's your first year in the Super League. Tell us about what you were doing in basketball before and how you ended up at Father Matthews. Um, well, before I was playing college ball, I played at USC for three years and UTSA for two. Um, really just leading those teams down there and working, working my tail off just to be able to get to this, uh, this level. And how did you get the connection with Father Matthews to come over here in the first place? Uh, my coach knows somebody, and then so now I know somebody, and then somebody knew somebody. So well, it's extremely Irish. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, Kira, in terms of sort of the experience you've had so far, because you're only here a couple of weeks, how have you found getting to know your teammates? Um, it's been that's been the easiest part. My team has been very welcoming. Uh, just being able to be in the city of Cork, I think that's been the best thing for me. Everybody's super nice. Um, I was here whenever the weather's been pretty great, so I'm very thankful for that and. I've just got, got along pretty well so far. And um, like in terms of sort of the style of basketball, like what's different to what you're playing here to what you played in college? I think the the refing is the biggest thing. But I, in terms of what's a foul, what's not a foul, um, the game is a lot more fast paced. The shot clock is now 24 seconds. There's just a couple things like not being able to call a timeout on the court. Uh, the backcourt rule once you're inbounding the ball like just little things like that is kind of me getting used to it But other than that, it's just basketball at the end of the day. And like we're, when we're recording this, it's like just over a week until the season starts. How excited for you to start your first season as a pro? Yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, crazy to think that I'm in this opportunity, like I'm in this position right now just to be out here and just play basketball again. 
but uh, super excited just to be in this environment, play with a whole new team, and uh, see what's in store for us. So, Kali, it's your first season playing in Ireland. For those of us who don't know you yet, tell us about your possible career up to now. Um, so I spent five years at Fairfield University in Connecticut. Um, I took a gap year in between to really work on my game and get better, and now I'm here. And so you've landed in Glanmire, like a club with a lot of tradition, a lot of success over the years. Yes. How do you feel joining them? Um, I just feel grateful, you know, coming onto a good program is pretty rare. So being able to be part of that and, you know, maybe even win some more um, cups and stuff would be really nice. And like for people who haven't seen you play, like what, tell us about your game, how you play, what, what, what works for you? Um, I'm definitely an inside player. Um, I like getting up and down the floor. You'll see that a lot. I love the mid range and I just like being aggressive. And you've been here a couple of weeks now. How have you found adjusting to getting to know your new teammates? Um, they have been extremely welcoming. They are the nicest girls in the world. Very loving, very caring, and uh, everything I could ask for. And in terms of the goals for this season, like, you know, what are you hoping to get out of the year? And what do you do, need to do as both a player and a team to achieve them? Um, as a player, I just want to make everyone around me better. Um, and as a team, I just want everyone to be able to develop. We're very young. So just being able to, you know, learn new skills and learn new things would be a key part in our success. And you feel confident you can compete for the championship this year? Yes, 100%. So now we return to the Men's Super League. Next up, we've got Mari, we've got Sligo All-Stars, and we've got Temple O. Fernando, it's your first year as head coach in Mari. Are you yeah. looking forward to the challenge? Yes, of course. Uh, we, uh, yeah, Charlie contacted to me. You know, the, Charlie was the coach uh, of the last three years or four years. He's, you know, his baby. And yeah, we take the challenge to continue his, his good job that he's making. So yeah, we are ready for that. And you're originally from Tenerife, so tell yeah. us how you ended up in Galway, which is obviously a very different climate to Tenerife, yeah. a very different basketball culture as well. Yeah, well, you know, I born and raised in Tenerife, but uh, my whole life is uh, overseas. So yeah, I was in Luxembourg five years. So some kind of weather is the same. And uh, also last season I was in Iceland. So yeah, a little bit more harder than here. So I am ready for take the challenge. And obviously the challenge ahead, because Mari have had a couple of really good seasons. Mm -hmm. Obviously uh, looked good last year, went to the championship game the year before and won the cup. Yeah. Like, are you hopeful you can get a really strong season out of these guys? Yeah, at least we will fight for that. You know, we, we, uh, we have a very good guys, uh, also local players that they are working very hard in this preseason. And yeah, uh, we will fight for, the, for all the challenge that we have ahead. And as we're talking now, there's just under two weeks until opening day. How excited are you for that? Ah, well, we are, we are making several games before and uh, this, in these times, you know, and yeah, we are focused on that. So yeah, we, we, we will fight, we will work for be the, the best shape possible for this in two weeks. People who haven't seen you as a coach before, hmm. what's the style you like to deploy? Well, you know, I try to bring the team the, a, a positive environment at the beginning of, uh, and then as soon as we have this kind of uh, teamwork uh, at the end, uh, we will fight for the in, in defense, so we will try to, to make a aggressive defense, uh, full court defense and uh, in offense, yeah, we will find the solutions. It's a rookie season, so uh, what's it been like, you know, experiencing life in Sligo first off? It's been different. Uh, I'm originally from London, so the speed of life's a lot slower, but I'm adjusting to it and now we're getting into the thick of the thin of basketball now, so it's fun. And so like you're, you're a Londoner over in the northwest of Ireland, so does the language help or do you find the accents a bit hard? It depends who I'm speaking to. <laughs> uh, the accents can be very thick. Sometimes I don't understand them. I just give them a couple Huh? Uh, but they, they get, I get it eventually. And like for people who haven't seen you play before, tell us about your role and like where you've played. Uh, so I played a few different colleges in America. Um, I'm electric. Uh, I get the offense going. Uh, I bring a lot of energy on defense as well. And you can expect to see a lot of highlights this year. And it's, it's your rookie season, obviously. What are your aims and goals personally before we get to the Sligo goals? Uh, personally, I want to have a good year. I want to kind of showcase the world that I can play and that I, I kind of deserve to be on this stage. And it was for Sligo this season, obviously, they had an exciting year last year. You hope you can bring them to another level? 100%. Win a championship. That's the goal. So what's it going to take for Sligo to win a championship? Us coming together as a team and showing everybody that we're ready to play. And obviously, you've gotten to know your teammates over the last couple of weeks. Tell us what, how you've grown as a player getting to know them. Um, obviously, I'm now more accustomed to them. I know how they play. They know how I play. And I'm adjusting my game to fit best for the team for us to win games. So, Dara, 
Tepelo coming into this season, like, how are you feeling about the prospects? Good. Uh, we're a young team, but I think we'll play with a lot of energy. Um, we'll be a fast-paced team. I think we'll give ourselves a good shot. And obviously, the Super League in general seems to be growing in profile. Yeah. Like, you know, are you hoping to get some good crowds out for Tepelo this year? Yeah, I think we'll have, we should have a good home-based crowd. Like, we've been playing games here in the arena, so we should get a good, nice crowd. We have a lot of the underage kids who'll be good supporters. And I suppose for you, personally, this season, yeah. It's a new season in terms of format. It's all yeah. everybody's playing each other twice. Yeah. It's 24 games. There's a lot of back to backs. Yeah. How are you feeling going into it? I think it'll be a good challenge. It's kind of nice. We've had the conferences the last few years, so the straight league will be good for the competition. See a nice outright winner from the league rather than the comp the playoffs. But I think the long season might play to our advantage a bit too with the young legs. So be good. And in terms of getting to the playoffs, what will Temple Logue need to do performance-wise? Not just win so many games. Yeah. But what will they need to do on the court to be a good enough team to make the postseason? I think defensively we'll have to be tight. We'll have to lock in early, keep teams, uh, limit teams offensively, and then just get out in transition, get ourselves good looks, and give ourselves a fighting chance. And so for you as a player, how are you hoping to develop this season? Uh, definitely step it up a little bit, get a few more minutes. Um, I think I see myself picking up full court, just being an aggressive defender, knock down open shots, just be aggressive and competitive, really. And obviously, so. your club coach also happens to be the national team coach. Yeah. How does that help you guys out? I think it's good. Um, Mark brings a lot of experience and um, knowledge to the game, and he's great at passing it on and sharing it. And yeah, it just gives us a good outlook on everything, really. And now we conclude the Men's Super League with UCD Marion, Belfast Star and Balancholic. So Rafi, it's your first season as head coach at Belfast Star. How are you looking forward to the challenge? Well, it is a challenge because uh, Belfast Star is a big club, like big history as well. And uh, the jersey is a, is a heavy jersey, so you have to be ready, disciplined and uh, get those boys again going with me. So they've been with, with other coaches before. Uh, New era, new uh, new ideas. So yeah, looking forward, very excited. And there's a lot more travel for the team this year, like because you're out there on your own in the northeast of the island. Is that going to be a challenge for you guys? Well, it, it is a challenge. It is because uh, if you look at it, we're on the only team up there, so we're going to be traveling most of the time. But yeah, if, if you want to win, if you want to be a champion, you're going to take all the challenges and look forward. That's it. So Rafi, why did you want to be the head coach of Belfast Star? Well, um, it's, for me, it's a good team. It's, uh, I mean, Bill McCotter, Neil McCotter, the McCotter families, they're like, they're always supportive, supportive and, and very good people to work with. So, plus the boys, uh, I mean, I was assisting last year and then just fell in love with the team. And it's like a family, so that's, that's the main reason, I think. And we can see from the crest, it's a very special year for Belfast Star, the 60th anniversary. It is. It is. Are you hoping you can end the season with something special to celebrate it? Yes, that we, I mean, that's our target. We're, we're in it to win every game, hopefully. And then we, we, our aim is to win the cup. You know, like everybody wants to win it. Wants to win the cup, wants to win the championship. So that's our target. And in order to achieve those targets, what will you need to do as a head coach? Well, I, well, I, well I'll have to work really hard and uh, be there for my team, be there for the boys. Uh, I've got a very good group of boys. They're very good. I think they're very talented and uh, I'm very lucky to have them in my team as well. So they're going to help me as well because me on my own, I can't do it. So I need the team to help me as well to achieve what we need to achieve. Antonio, your first season as head coach of Alan Colic. How are you looking forward to it? Well, I'm really happy and really excited. We cannot uh, wait for for this upcoming season. You know, we cannot start for for this beginning of uh, of the of the season. So we are, you know, really happy with the building that we are doing right now. Uh, we have a very good a very good group of guys uh, working really hard, and you know, we can feel you know that passion from the basketball. You know, in the in the environment that we have around us. And obviously, Balancholic, they won the championship two years ago. What do you need to do to be contending again this season? Well, I think the most, most important thing is to build step by step, as you know. Uh, this format uh, creates even a more exciting competition because it's going to be a longer competition in terms of regular season games. The, in between the row, you know, to have uh, the, the cup format is another plus for, for the Irish basketball, for the competition. So, you know, it's a long journey 
so it just you know to build a step by a step to be on our best version you know during the process and so it's about that process because obviously you've had pre-season now what have you seen the team improve the most between when you first met them and now well i think um we are trying to fly into a you know to have a very good habits on the practices uh, to to try to have uh, uh, very dynamic way to play, to try to be active, but the most important thing, you know, to have IQ, to make very good decision making, to understand better as a team all the decisions that we need to take on the court in both sides of the court. So, you know, I think that we are enjoying, you know, that step forwards and to feeling that every, every week we have a solid and better habits on this 100% better each week. And like for you as a coach, because uh, obviously this is your first time coaching in the Irish Super League as a head coach, right? What's, that, what's your previous experience going to be like helping you with that? Well, I think uh, I'm coming from a long experience in Spain, coaching professionally in a very good level like Leps. So it helps to me, you know, to work with many, many different nationalities as, you know, Spanish player, American player, Lithuanian players national teams aspiring to qualify for, you know, World Cup or Olympic Games. So for me, it's something that helps to me when I need to work abroad uh, to understand different cultures. And last season I was working in Sweden. So for me personally, it was my first experience working outside from Spain. So it was a very good step for the next one as this season for me is going to be. Well, the last thing I want to ask you about is the culture, because obviously you're now in Cork a, a few weeks now. So how have you found adapting to life in Cork, the food, the nightlife, everything? Well, I ain't, I ain't really enjoying the life in, in Cork, in Balin College, you know. The people, first of everything, I can feel that it's really nice, very close to me, you know, the food, the culture, um, the chemistry that you can feel from all the people that you have around is great. So you enjoy your day by day when you need to disconnect outside from the basketball. So it makes you happy at the end of the day. So if you have outside the basketball, it helps you to have better energy to put and to bring to the to the people that you need to help in the in your day by day responsibilities. So obviously Marion, you've just been promoted into the league this season. Yeah. The immediate question with anyone who's been promoted is are you confident of staying up? Obviously, like two years ago, we wouldn't be saying the same, but seeing the team this year, I'm, I'm quite confident that we can stay up and do well in this league. So, And you say seeing the team this year, tell us about what's different about the team that you've got. Um, I think we just have different facets, like every position is kind of taken care of. Um, we have young guys, we have old guys, we have experience, and we just got a great year behind us. So um, yeah, excited to get into it. Okay, you're going to switch players here. Yeah. Hey. And you love professionalism, folks. So obviously, you know, there's like new players. You've got like, you know, a new look, but you're in the same great old places of UCD and Oatlands. In terms of sort of getting that home support, how important is it? Yeah, it's big. Uh, we're still a very young team. Like uh, two years ago when we were in the Super League, we were very young. But we kind of still had the same core with me and Matt here. And then we had the same professional with John and a lot of new players coming in. So yeah, there's lots of new faces, but we still kind of have the same core. So yeah, it would be really big to get the support down um, to the home games anyway, yeah. And in terms of sort of, you know, performance on the court, where do you feel you're impressing most to yourselves right now and where do you feel you can work the most? Uh, well, with Marion, it's always, uh, we're always focused on our defence. That's what Yana says, uh, always focus on our defence and then we can play through that through our offence. So once our defence is all right, we're happy out and then we can play through our offence. So the big thing is just keep focus on defence, locking on the defence, and then the offence will come over time. I know Yana, he's one of the great characters as well as one of the great coaches in the Super League. Tell us what it's like working with him. Yeah, uh, he's very good. He's very intense, but uh, he means good. And um, yeah, he's uh, as you, you can probably see it from the sideline. That's not the whole story, but uh, in trains and all, uh, we train really hard every day. But he really he does mean good. Uh, he just it's kind of like tough love, if you like. Um, that's the only way to put it: tough love. And uh, he's all have your back. But yeah, no, he's good. I don't really have much bad things to say about him. Yeah. And let's go back to you for the last question. Yeah, here you yeah go. sure. And so the last one is: so let's say. You find a way to not be in a dogfight for relegation. You're fighting for the playoffs. What do you need to make sure you're in that position to fight for the playoffs? I think just experience. Like that's something we didn't have two years ago. Uh, this year, I think we have the pieces where we can compete with experience. Like we have the talent. Now we have, you know, a few older guys. We're not just relying on maybe one or two. But uh, yeah, we're a better, well-rounded team this year. Yeah.
So that's the end of, well, this part of the journey, but it's of course only the beginning of the season. We'll be going all around Ireland, all around Europe, of course, and maybe even further away in the world over the course of this season. Every bit of support we get, every subscription, every share, every like, every comment, it really makes a huge difference. It means we can do more videos like this, telling basketball stories to a wider audience all the time. Please join us on it. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and I'll see you soon. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.